Hello, hello, hello. Um, good evening to everyone. Um, my name is Matthew McNaughton and welcome to this information session about the Open Government Partnership in Jamaica. Uh, thank you all for joining us this evening. I know the information session was sent out just, just last week. Um, and while a uh, couple of persons have been, there's been quite a bit of interest, a few persons that let us know that it didn't quite work from a time perspective for them, but they will be, they've asked for the video and we'll be sharing that as well. Um, but for those of you who are able to join us, um, I wanna say thank you very much. Um, the goal of today's, to this evening's session is really more to kind of introduce um, both the MSF, the, the Multi-Stakeholder Forum, uh, but also to introduce the OGP, because I know this is something that some persons may have heard about. A few colleagues have been asked, have asked questions around or have interacted in different ways. Um, but also to to give an to share an opportunity to get involved in the in Jamaica's OGP as it transitions to its next um, national action plan cycle. So for today's session, and I'll. Um, just will provide an overview and then also give a quick introduction of myself as well. Um, we're gonna do a, you know, kind of, we're in kind of the welcome right now. Um, I'm gonna talk for about 15, 20 minutes max to just kind of touch on a few different things. Um, talk about what the OGP is, talk about what the MSF is in terms of how it relates to the OGP structure and then talk about the nomination process, um, which, this is what prompts today's call as we kind of welcome in new members of the um, MSF from a civil society perspective, and then to open up for questions if there are any from the from the audience. Um, and I think to to kick off, as I said, so my name is Matthew McNaughton. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of the Sashroots Foundation, and uh, Sashroots is a um, social impact organization based in based in Jamaica that focuses on um, how we can use and leverage technology to improve public services, as well as solve problems that exist um, within, within our society. I uh, sit on the current MSF, um, one of the civil society representatives of the MSF, and um, so we'll be providing you some time, happy to talk about that experience, but also talk about the process that we're hoping to run to bring on new members of the MSF um, in, in the future. So with that, I'm gonna jump right in. So what is the Open Government Partnership? Um, for, for context, the OGP is a global initiative that provide, pro, promotes transparency, accountability, and citizen engagement in government. It was founded back in 2011 um, by eight founding governments and has since grown to almost 80 uh, national governments. They are OGP for local governments, so cities, um, states, municipal, other kinds of municipal organizations, and it has participation of over 3,000 civil society organizations. And the real goal kind of premise of the OGP in terms of what the part, what it's structured around is really to create a mechanism through which civil society and government can kind of sit at the same table and make commitments to advance open governments and citizen collaboration in the respective countries. And uh, um, the OGP exercise itself is that each country, um, it's, part, it's voluntary, it's participatory, each country um, makes a voluntary um, nomination to participate, the declaration that they are participating in the OGP. And then as part of that, then in to comply with the OGP process, runs a number of exercises and sets up a number of mechanisms related to their um, national action plan. And a national action plan um, is effectively a collection of commitments that countries make to advance the shared shared goals and the values that um, OGP and the members, the countries and member governments that participate in civil society um, uh, believe in. So Jamaica joined the OGP back in December 2016, 
and the uh, Andrew Holness government at the time led um, indicated was a signatory to it. In Jamaica, it is run out of the, of the Ministry of Finance and Public Service. We have just completed roughly our first national action planning cycle. And we are now about to begin our second national action plan cycle. And that plan is actually available. Uh, we're in a process that has gone through a series of consultations with various stakeholders, uh, working groups. And I'll touch a little bit about what's in that action plan um, and then also share links if you want to go take a look at that yourself. Um, and the commitments and activities that make up Jamaica's second national action plan are going to run from August 2024, so we're about to kick, kick that off, into June 2026. It will be a two-year um, period for our national action plan. And so what is in a national action plan and specifically what's in ours? So the... Again, I'm not going to go too much detail into today's action plan, but you know there are a number of different commitment areas that make up Jamaica's NAP um, National Action Plan, and touching on different sectors. Um, our action plan for the second cycle actually builds quite a bit on the action plan commitments that we had in our first cycle, um, which we'll get into a little bit. But it was as it was co-created and co-authored over the last, I think six, seven months um, through a series of working group meetings. Um, the action plan was published by the Minister of, of Finance for persons to potentially comment on, as well as persons within government, within the in this respective NDAs that are responsible for executing to also provide feedback on those reform commitments. And so there are focus areas across action plan. And I'll just quickly give just a, a top level on, on that, mainly because we're not focused in going in in detail on the action plan today, but I think it's just, it's, it's relevant to get the sense because, you know, if you are thinking about sitting on or potentially participating in the MSF, it's good to get a sense of there might be a particular thematic area that's especially important um, to you um, that you can, that might prompt you to say, hey, I want to get more involved or there may be working groups that you might want to join as a, as a result of getting some of this context. So um, there are a number of commitments, um, two on, on the screen. So one, the first one relates to a commitment in the area of anti-corruption. Um, and this, this, this commitment in particular is really looking at strengthening the anti-corruption anti mechanisms um, in the public service. And the core commitment within that one relates to the national anti-corruption strategy, the passage of, of the Jamaica's first national anti-corruption strategy, and the engagement um, around that around that strategy. The, the second one related to um, second area relating to open data, access to information, is really around enhancing the public's access to government data and information. And that's going to be looking at two. Um, two areas. One, upgrading and strengthening Jamaica's open data system, so specifically the open data portal. This is something that was launched um, a, a decade ago, but has, has not been, been consistently updated. And so there's a new commitment to re rejuvenate this effort. Um, and that was uh, one of the commitments that made the most progress through the, the first cycle. And we want to build on that progress for the second one. Um, and then also related to amending Jamaica's Access to Information Act. This is an act that we, we, we have on the books um, and has been scheduled to be revised and updated um, for some time. And so the government is now making a commitment to amend that, that, that act and run, go, run through the consultations around that process um, as in accordance with um, this commitment period. Um, there are commitments related to the environment and climate change um, and looking at how we can ultimately um, strengthen some of the mechanisms that exist. Um, and the commitment area in this um, is, uh, commitment areas in this really relate to completing the environmental impact assessment regulations um, and carrying out the developments of climate change legislation and related activities to that. This is one of the, the things that many of the stakeholders that have participated in the discussions is something that 
um, a number of groups have wanted to see um, come into operationalization for some time, and we're hoping to make progress on that in this cycle. And there are some things and timelines spelled out for that uh, in the action plan. In human rights and the justice area, we want to increase and support public awareness around, and access around their, how they can access to the just judicial system and the human rights. And this is going to be looking at um, increasing information on public awareness around the judicial system and, and a part set of information resources related to, to, to that commitment area as well. And the last one was in relation to youth development um, and really around strengthening both youth participation in various mechanisms but also use access to services and thinking about the differentiated experience of young people in regards to a number of different public services and how do we ultimately um, strengthen that and so these different things can these different focus areas kind of make up um, the jamaica's current action plan there are a number of commitments in there that go, the commitments go into more detail around the specific activities and timelines for which those things will take place. Um, and so you can look at that, look at the action plan yourself. And effectively, the MSF is, which we'll talk a little bit about, is the mechanism for overseeing um, and shepherding the process by which this work is taking place. So what? is the multi-stakeholder forum, the MSF for short. So the, um, the purpose of the MSF is really around providing oversight of and guidance for the co-creation, implementation, and the monitoring of national action plans. They are comprised of both government and civil society persons, and each MSF is co-chaired by government and a civil society representative. So the, there's equal representation of um, both parties, uh, both stakeholders on the MSF. And that kind of collaborative um, structure is represented in how the, the MSFs themselves are governed. The, some of the core functions of the MSF, we monitor progress on the national action plan. So, you know, this is primarily in collaboration and through the Ministry of Finance. And so implementing ministries have to report um, routinely on their progress. We did that typically quarterly in the last action planning cycle. And then the responsibility of the MSF is to effectively get that information out to the broader audience. Um, and so building awareness Around, around that, but also um, participation in the process. And so when we're doing these quarterly review sessions around the implementation of the action plan, those are usually consultative and actually often have quite a bit of problem solving as well as kind of the persons who are part of working groups are kind of receiving the feedback from the, the implementing ministries, but also providing feedback and suggestions um, for, that, for that work. Um, so, you know, fostering dialogue and also um, a critical component of the MSF is leading the co-creation process for the action plan. So we obviously have just come out of that process for the second action plan. But as we look forward to potentially the uh, third action plan, it would be the MSF's responsibility in partnership um, with the Ministry of Finance and Public Service to lead the co-creation process for that new action plan as well. Um, so I talked a little bit about this. It's about it's seven, it's seven representatives on the government side, seven representatives on the civil society side. Um, and uh, similar to what we did in the first cycle, we've reserved one of those civil society representative seats as a U seat. And so this will be a special specific um, seat for persons under 24 to be able to sit on the MSF. I mean, if there are multiple people on the N24, they can at that apply. I mean, we're welcome, we're welcoming and open to that, but just wanted to flag that there is a specific reservation um, for a youth representative on Jamaica's MSF. And that was a decision that we civil society decided to make as part of the design of the system. So how do you join? 
Um, and so there are a couple, I will touch on a number of different things on this. I think it's important, we've touched aspects of it in terms of understanding the role of the MSF and its responsibilities, and that will be critical for, for you as well um, to understand when you apply, um, but also as you go through the nomination selection process, um, ensure that you meet the eligibility criteria. Um, and then obviously you have to submit a self-nomination on through the nomination site. Um, and so there will be a review process. And so once the nomination, once you submit the nominations, there will be a selection committee that will review all of the submissions um, that come in. Um, and I'll talk about the dates in a, in a second with the subsequent slide. Um, and that subsection committee is going to review all of the submissions, the shortlist of the candidates. Um, the candidate shortlisted candidates will be into it will be invited for a short interview with the selection committee um, to kind of add, to ask them a number of questions about their application and their suitability and kind of interest in the role. And then the selection committee is going to um, make a recommendation for the final candidates that will be selected based on expertise. Um, how engaged you've been with the broader community um, in, in different ways, and then obviously alignment with the OGP values. And the self-nomination process is currently open. Um, deadlines and all applications are to be submitted. Um, oh, there's an adjustment there. We actually just extended it to the 29th. Um, and the applications are available on the opengovja.org website. Um, just some considerations around eligibility to be aware of. Um, candidates cannot be active public servants. There's a process for which people who are government representatives to sit on the MSF. Um, so candidates should not be current public servants within a government organization to sit um, as a civil society rep, or certainly you won't be sitting in your capacity as a member of the of the of the um, of the uh, public service. Um, individuals will are operating in their individual capacity um, on on the MSF, and so even though you might, for example, yeah, you know, maybe you're working for an organization that fits focuses on environmental issues. Um, and you, and as a result, your organization is supporting your participation. Um, your seat on the MSF is in an individual capacity, and that's just important. Where for for whatever reason, for example, you may need to to sit, to to demit your role during the the two year period, or if, for example, you um, may need to you know move on. It's not going to be the case that your role naturally not necessarily goes to someone else within your organization. Um, we're also going to be looking for sectoral representation. And so as I kind of shared earlier that there are a number of different commitments, um, focus areas. And so we're really looking for an MSF that itself is also diverse with a broad set of expertise on um, the different sectoral areas. And that's going to be something that the section committee is going to be keeping in mind as they um, uh, make their um, recommendations. And then as we mentioned, there will be a youth re reserve space. The youth reserve space does not necessarily have to focus on the youth commitment. Um, so just as a, as a flag, if you're a young person who is interested in technology or you're interested in um, the corruption or, or, or any of the other areas, you can obviously serve and engage on those topics as, as well. And here we just have the dates in terms of the key dates for the nomination process. This information is available on the opengovja.org website. Um, the call for nominations are open right, right now. They opened last, last week. Um, we're obviously here having the information session right now. The nomination deadline will go to the end of the month. And then after that, the selection committee will review the nominations over that two week period. And obviously that includes the emancipence um, period. Um, and uh, from there, we will start based on their decision around the shortlisted candidates, we will invite persons to interview. Um, and so over the, the second half of August will be an interview um, period with each candidate to be able to 
ask questions, kind of share their interests, then the announcement of the selected candidates will take place in September. Um, and then we'll get to work, obviously. Um, and then that's the first meeting of the MSF with both the new civil society representatives and government representatives will take place after that. Just a quick context. I mean, the application form is fairly light. Um, we ask some general information, personal information about yourself, um, area, area of expertise in terms of which of the focus areas you are especially interested in engaging on or, or thoughts on or wanting to, to work on. Um, and then just a very short motivation question asking, you know, why do you want to join the MSF and kind of what skills, experiences from your background do you think you'll be bringing to the forum if you were to be selected? And then the last piece being a, a, just a general a resume or CV for the, from the candidates. Um, and so that would be the application that will be submitted. And that's also on the submitted through the, um, the OGP website. So yeah, I mean, um, very excited about this, very excited to kind of bring new persons into this space. Um, really hope that you will consider applying. Um, I think this is, um, I, I really enjoyed being a part of the MSF in the first cycle. And I think it's one of the things where, I think there are many persons in the conversations that we have that people feel that they don't really understand some of the decisions or what happens in government or how they might be able to participate or contribute. Um, and the MSF and the OGP process broadly really gives you a, a, a different perspective on some of the work that's happening, but also allows you to contribute to some of the reforms that many of the reforms that we all want to see in Jamaica. With that, I am going to open up for questions. Um, feel free to add any questions that you have into the chat. Um, that you may have on the process, on experience of the MSF, any of those things. Um, and while we wait for those questions, I'm actually going to bring a colleague onto the onto the to the screen, um, Richard Lumsden. Um, he's a director for Economic um, Reform Monitor, Economic Reform Monitoring Unit within the Ministry of Finance and Public Service, and he's been uh, the kind of the the glue and the, the enabler of a lot of the MSF OGP, for the OGP work um, over the last few years. So let's bring Richard on and um, happy to get any thoughts from you, Richard, on, on, on the MSF for the OGP process or any things that you want to kind of raise or share with the audience. No, thank you, Matthew. I just want to say, uh, and hello, everyone. I just want to um, say that like you, we are very um, excited to be at this point, and we look forward to hopefully welcoming the new members um, from civil society. I think we work in the spirit of a, trying to make live up to the name, a um, open government partnership, a partnership between government and civil society. And so we are really hoping that we will have the opportunity to um, work with a new representatives from civil society for this sec second action planning cycle. Thanks, Richard. So we're at the end of the, the OGP cycle, um, the co-creation cycle for the national action plan, but do you wanna maybe share some context on some of the activities that we did? And I guess like what's left in terms of in terms of getting Jamaica's action plan formally um, approved, we started the process after the end of the first action planning cycle in August 2023, and requested approval from cabinet to enter into a second action planning cycle, which was pro granted by cabinet decision in November of 2023. We began with. Um, meetings with civil society, stakeholder consultation groups, in not only civil society, but government as well, um, in the different focus areas. And through those meetings, we revised the commitments, building on the first action plan. Mm -hmm. And we did one iteration of that, which resulted in a first draft of the plan in um, February. 
and we did a second round of revising that draft with further meetings that were held in um, May, May, June, May, June. And we now have the second draft, which was put in the public domain and we're on the now finalizing that document to submit the cabinet again for approval. So basically that's where we're at. We would hope that all of that would take place between now and the end of this month or at the latest end of next month. So that would fit in with the cycle um, that you had indicated in your slide with September, um, probably being the time when we'd have the first meeting of the new multi-stakeholder forum. So thank you. Thank you very much for that one, Richard. Um, I see a question here from Pepe. I'm going to bring it onto the screen so we can all um, see it. And so Pepe asks, um, are we somehow mentioning the priority policy areas of the new OGP strategy as thematic areas of interest or expertise for the MSF members? Those include justice, environment, gender and inclusion, anti-corruption, access to information, fiscal openness, media freedom, civic space, and digital governance. Um, you wanna give, you wanna come in, come in on this one, um, Richard? Happy to happy to also share thoughts um, on, on 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 this as well. Well, I think you mentioned those areas when you were describing the commitments in the second national action plan, which are the same basically as the focal areas for the first national action plan. Um, I mean, we, we're not limiting, I don't think you're limiting civil society representatives to persons who are particularly in these areas. But of course, if they have an interest in these areas, then that would, would encourage hopefully their you know, interest and participation. But it's not, I don't think the um, representation by civil society has to be limited to these specific areas. These are the areas that the National Action Plan focus on, focuses yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. No, I think, I think both of those are great points. And thank you for this question, Pepe. Um, I'll, I'll share a little bit of some of the thinking that's informing the process. And I think Richard makes a, a, a very important point. Um, we're not limiting um the civil society representation to those areas um but we actually are um in in some of the lessons that we had from the last cycle we are inv inviting and will be kind of in a way prioritizing persons who can can kind of communicate that hey like i'm especially interested in these areas or i have some experience um in the in the past or currently um, being an active contributor to discussions around these areas um, or has some subject matter expertise. Um, not that they have to be, that has to be your day job, but really saying that this is something I'm passionate about. Um, we took that decision a little bit in terms of incorporating it into the selection process because what we're hoping to evolve and some of the ideas that were discussed by last MSF um, as we kind of transition into this next cycle, is that we really want to strengthen the engagement um, around the action plan and the commitments. And one of the thinking and being responsive to that is, okay, if we have persons, broader set of persons that have interest and kind of background in some of these areas on a civil society side as well, they're gonna be better positioned to both contribute to discussions in, in thematic areas, but also to bring in stakeholders or other persons that they may be familiar within those communities that work on those issues to the to the table as well. So it's really an idea um, uh, that we're we're exploring in this second cycle. Um, so we're not constraining ourselves. If we if we get a ton of people that are really experienced in a particular thematic area, we'll definitely in, invite them to the and, and um, bring them on board. We think they would be great mem members, but it's something that we're thinking about and keeping in mind as we um, go through the selection process. Thanks for that question, Pepe. Um, 
So okay. there was a question from one of your colleagues at the Slash Roots Foundation about the nomination deadline. Yes. So the deadline. Yes. So the, just I, I made that correction. So the deadline has been extended. Um, so if you had looked on the site, say before today, um, we are going to be extending the deadline. Mainly, obviously, there's as we're all aware, there's a lot happening in Jamaica right now as we think about um, and we go through the initial stages of the um, recovery from Hurricane Barrel. And so we wanted to kind of give a little bit more space. Um, some people are still struggling with electricity and, and, and other and other things to give people a little bit more space to be able to think about um, their immediate needs, but then also become ultimately to be able to spread more awareness around the opportunity to serve in this capacity. So it is now to the 31st of the of July, um, whereas the previous date was a week earlier. Okay. Richard, do we, I think it's probably helpful, I and mean, I know if we, I'm not sure if we'll get any more questions, but it's also helpful to maybe give some context on how did the MSF, um, how frequent does MSF meet? Um, you know, what's, you know, you know what, are, what are some of those working structures in terms of persons might be signing up for as well? Yes, I'm sure that would be of interest to persons in terms of what sort of commitment you may be making. Um, the the multi-stakeholder forum generally meets virtually mm -hmm. online um, once a month. That's the schedule we aim for. Um, some months, the, no meeting is held, and I think we usually take a break or for at least one month out of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and the meetings may run between, generally between an hour and a half to two hours. We look at the um, action items that might have arisen out of the previous meeting. Um, review where progress is in terms of various areas. And in this case, we would start out by making some decisions about maybe modifying the terms of reference for the multi-stakeholder forum, since we're making changes to the numbers of members and we may look at some other areas as well. So also we invite members of the multi-stakeholder forum to attend meetings that we hold with stakeholders. Um, as Matthew indicated, we um, are planning to have at least quarterly, quarterly meetings with stakeholders and multi-stakeholder forum members are invited to those, those meetings and would, are welcome to attend. And that's generally the, the process outside of the periods when we are preparing a national, new national action plan, which in this case would not be if the government decides to do a third national action plan, that would not be until 2026. So that typically would be what the work of the multi-stakeholder forum looks like on a month-to-month -month basis. Just uh, a reminder, uh, the nomination process is going to close on July 31st. Um, if persons uh, and all nominations should be submitted through the website. Um, and so let me see if I can pull that back up, that we're all seeing it. It's all, it's going to be on opengovja.org. All nominations do have to go through this to this to this site. Um, there is also an email address on the, the website, and so if you are running into any issues, please reach out to the team with any questions that you that you have um, uh, about the about the process or any challenges that you're having submitting your nominations. Um, and also, if you have questions around OGP in the lead up to the exercise, um, to the deadline, you can also reach out to the team at the email address that is there. Um, and so with that, I want to say thank you to everyone that tuned in um, or on various social media platforms. Um, thank you to, to Richard for joining us um, this evening as well. Um, and then all the best to, to you all. Um, stay safe and uh, take care.